Uh, welcome to Malawi's presentation. And uh, <coughs> basically, our country is uh, landlocked and is uh, found in Southeast Africa, being bordered by Tanzania, Mozambique, and Zambia. And let me mention that we have a free movement of people, and the country is divided into 28 administrative districts uh, with the population of 17.6 million. And also 29% of the households, uh, they are living under the international poverty line uh, of $2 per day. And poverty remains particularly prevalent in rural areas where almost 80% of the population are residing. At the cholera situation in Malawi, uh, we were first hit by the first outbreak in the 1973. And since 1998, uh, we have had outbreaks almost on the year basis. And uh, this uh, coincides with the rainy season. But we have had the largest waves of outbreaks uh, in 1998, 1999 season, 2001, 02, and 2008, uh, 09 seasons. And the uh, graph only depicts the, um, we had uh, a lot of cases uh, in 2008, 2009. But with the uh, highest uh, case fatality rate in 2010, 2011 season, uh, followed by 2017-2018 season. So in 2016, uh, we had an assessment of the Korea hotspots. And in 2017, uh, we met and categorized them. So the main Cholera hotspots um, in Marawi, uh, we have Lake Chirwa Basin. Uh, it's found in, um, that's, the, that's the area. And also Shirevare, it's within the same area. And the uh, districts that, uh, um, that are very close to Lake Marawi and also major cities. So all the districts and, um, uh, that are categorized under high risk are uh, districts um, along the Lake Chirwa Basin and also Shirevari. While the, those that are at moderate risk are the ones that are closer to Lake Malawi and the major cities. And the 15 districts, um, uh, regarded as the low risk uh, districts. Coming to the current status of the uh, National Korea Prevention and Control Plan, the plan was developed uh, in 2017, but we had to update it in 2018, and that led to the development of National Korea Epidemic Preparedness and Response Plan. The plan is very comprehensive. Uh, that is integrated and intersectoral uh, in nature. It's a one-year plan that we will run up to September 2019. And we are actually um, covering those, uh, the population that is in the cholera hotspots. Within the plan, we have uh, included uh, a number of sectors in terms of coordination and readership mechanism. Uh, surveillance, uh, including laboratory confirmation. Uh, we have also areas to do with case management, uh, or cholera vaccine uh, administration, and more emphasis. Um, I will be talking about WASH interventions and the social mobilization and communication uh, to promote hygiene. The funding requirement for the, the plan uh, is 5.2 million US dollars. But I want to stress here that uh, out of this, 4.4 uh, has been committed by partners. And when I say it's commitment, um, I want to say that uh, the, they have committed 
and uh, some of the partners they have already uh, we have already started tapping uh, the resources uh, we are not very quite sure about the other partners uh, but that's the commitment and the gap that we have is uh, around 830 uh, US dollars so as we said uh, the the plan was endorsed by minister of wealth and we had involvement of key stakeholders in the development of the plan, the government, international and local partners, um, just to mention a few, WHO, UNICEF, and MSH. And the overall coordination is being provided by National Health Cluster, and this is uh, Matisekru, uh, with operational oversight uh, being provided by FIM, that's Public Health Institute of Malawi. Uh, now let me go to WASH sector. Uh, we have WASH cluster uh, at central level, and this um, it actually provides uh, coordination uh, to the grassroots, to the actors on the ground. And within the WASH, um, in the plan, we have interventions. Uh, we have emphasis on this some dissertation the initiative of uh, initiating open identification free initiative in all the districts uh, through uh, different approaches like community to total sanitation, school rate total sanitation, and even uh, promoting sanitation marketing uh, for imp improved uh, sanitation. Uh, we are also dislodging uh, latrines uh, in institutions like schools uh, with support from partners. And also, um, we are engaging uh, community for sanitation and hygiene promotion through participatory hygiene and sanitation transformation uh, approach. Within the same uh, access to safe water, um, the plan also emphasizes on the drilling and maintenance of boreholes, uh, connecting households to the piped water and also a treatment of water uh, through port-to-port coordination in uh, cholera hotspots. We are also uh, water monitoring through water, water testing at the water source, as well as uh, microbiological testing and the re uh, free residual chlorine testing in cholera hotspots. For hygiene, uh, for in terms of hand washing, uh, we are routinely distributing soap to health facilities and also school uh, with us with the support from partners. Um, we also have regular community sensitization interventions and regular food inspection in markets, restaurants, and also in health facilities that are admitting patients. Now, uh, we have uh, challenges in terms of this plan uh, regarding sanitation in that uh, we have inadequate sanitary infrastructure, infrastructures in schools and public places, uh, that's latrines and hand washing facilities, and this is due to inadequate resources. And as a country, uh, we are very, um, we are prone to flooding and heavy rains. So numerous basic latrines, they are prone to collapse during rainy season. As a result, uh, it's leading to uh, low open defecation free coverage, and uh, it's very hard to sustain it. Uh, for the hygiene, um, sustainability of soap distribution uh, is also a challenge due to inadequate resources. And uh, for access to safe water, um, up to now, in Malawi, some areas still don't have access to safe water. And uh, um, water is contaminated. And in some areas, uh, you find that water is sorted. So um, what is it that we are doing in Malawi? And uh, what is it that we need? Okay. For the uh, challenge in terms of inadequate sanitary infrastructures in schools and public places, um, 
We are constructing center facilities in schools, that's by government uh, and also district councils, as well as partners. Uh, we also mentioned about distribution of uh, hand washing buckets uh, with partner supports. But uh, we still need uh, resources for construction of sanitary facilities in public places. Mm -hmm. And these challenges, we are uh, focusing much um, in the uh, cholera hotspots. Uh, the quality of latrines, uh, we are promoting constructions of improved latrines uh, through sanitation marketing towards communities. And uh, we want more resources to engage uh, more local artisans so that they can promote uh, sanitation marketing in terms of uh, quality of latrines. On low ODF coverage and uh, sustainability, we have initiated those approach, community retro sanitation and the school retro sanitation in all districts. Uh, but it's only a part of the districts. Out of uh, the districts are further divided into uh, small areas, which we call traditional authorities. And we have around 268 traditional authorities. But out of that, we have managed just to get uh, 111 traditional authorities that are ODF free. So we needed that we should have a, uh, the uh, almost every district should be uh, order free. In terms of sustainability of soft distribution, um, that indeed is being done um, to health facilities and it's more of routine by the uh, district health officials. Um, but to maintain soft distribution in schools uh, is really a challenge. So uh, we need at least support in that. Uh, finally, uh, in terms of universal access to safe water, uh, the challenge that we have is uh, no improved resource of water available in some areas uh, in uh, cholera hotspots. Uh, drilling and maintaining and rehabilitation of boreholes uh, is being done by government and partners. But still more, when you visit our um, the comprehensive plan, you will see that we still have deficit, uh, that we need more resources to increase the coverage. We are also doing uh, a treatment of water through port-to-port -port coordination at household level, as well as at the uh, water source. So we needed more chlorine. As such, uh, uh, we needed more resources. For water contamination, uh, and uh, uh, salt water, uh, we are doing water quality monitoring in all Korea hotspots uh, by districts uh, with partner supports. Uh, but we need additional water quality tests so that it can be used across the country. And also we can be able to monitor uh, free residual chlorine. Uh, finally, um, where we have sorted waters in Korea hot spots, we are advocating for use of uh, filters, water filters, and uh, uh, currently at a small scale, uh, we are providing at households uh, with this partner support, but we needed uh, more resources so that we can distribute, uh, distribute water uh, filters to each and every household in the consent um, areas. Thank you very much.